Yeah. Well, hey, uh, James, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm, I'm so glad we met and uh, so glad for your ministry and what you're doing with those children every day. And, man, hats off to you, uh, literally and, uh, and in the game. So thank you so much. I hope that was uh, – um, I hope that's something that as we as we move forward, um, we can collaborate some more because that was really – I really enjoyed that. Yeah, thank you uh, for – uh, you got me thinking about some stuff, so that's awesome. Uh, and uh, yeah, anytime you just holler at me, and I'll do my best to help you out, man. Cool, I really appreciate that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and close in prayer, and we're gonna pray for uh, uh, Randall and Josh, and for uh, James's ministry, and for Andrew and his uh, going through seminary. Uh, blood letter curse. Is there anything we can pray for you on? Um, I'm intoxicated. You're intoxicated. So you want us yeah. to pray that you'd be less intoxicated? <laughs> or more so? Because <laughs> we're not going to help you in one of those areas. <laughs> um, <laughs> no worries. To, to just stop, quit completely. Yeah. Oh, you want to be done. Yeah. Awesome. How old are you? Uh, thirty-one. Okay. Well, I am. Um, I am forty-six, and since age thirteen, I had been um, an alcoholic. My mother was a rampant alcoholic, and I was drunk basically every day, in some way, shape, or form, for the last uh, thirty odd years. And so, I actually stopped completely. And I would like to tell you that it was something I figured out on my own but the reality is is I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and it is because of him and him alone that I was able to quit I don't I don't know how you do it without him so um, I don't are you are you uh, religious at all or are you a follower or where are you at um yeah I'm a I'm a follower but um, I kind of fell away like and started getting back into like bad habits so like, go ahead um like i when i lived in a town small town and i went to church like every sun sunday so what changed? Wait, wait, I can re. Um, um. It's a long story. All right. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of pain there. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just gonna say, um, blood litigious, Um, you can talk to us anytime. Okay. Um, if you want to add me, you can if you'd like. Okay. Is it okay if I ask your first name? Uh, Christopher? Christopher. Well, Christopher, um, I've been where you're at, and mm -hmm. I, um... I couldn't be me without alcohol and only by um, God giving me a new uh, a new desire and making me a new creature did I um, did I manage to uh, or did he he did it he freed me from that I mean some uh, don't get me wrong alcohol can be um, it's a gift from God and and it can be enjoyed by people but but some of us, and I, I'm one of them, I, I can't do it. I just, um, there's not a way for me to um, just uh, have one. And now that I'm free of it, I, I want to just tell you there's hope. And it's a wonderful thing. I, remembered, I remember all the days I'm spending with my kids and my family now. Um, I don't have to worry about waking up in the morning and go, oh my, what did I do last night? What have I done? What have I said? I don't need to worry about uh, hurting those that I love. 
I don't need to worry about the money. Oh my goodness, how much money did I waste on that? But um, yeah. being free of this, Christopher, is uh, it's a wonderful thing. But I don't I don't know how you do it without having all of your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and knowing that uh, with His help you can do it. But um, but without without depending on Him, I don't know how anybody does it just on their own. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't know what level you're intoxicated at right now, but am I making any sense to you or? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I don't get like blackout. I I just drink a few beers, but I've been doing it a lot lately, and it's like it's kind do you of have, been, like getting to me. Do you have a Do you happen to have a wife and kiddos at all? No, I'm okay. Single. Okay. I'm live at my home. I have another friend on on PSN. He doesn't play Fallout, but um, he's in the exact same position. And I talk yeah. to him, and um, sometimes he's going well, sometimes he's not. He has he's separated from his partner, and he sees his daughter sometimes. And sometimes he comes to me when he's drunk, and sometimes he comes to me when he's sober. And he, uh, you know, so I'm not. And so a long time ago, I kind of had a brief period where I was irresponsible with alcohol but it's probably not not doesn't sound like to the same the same level of uh, harm to your life as, as Peter or or you but I don't know so I can talk about it some other time because it's it's late where where Peter is at the moment yeah um So, where you're at right now, Christopher, um, do you have family or anybody by you? Any Anybody who's um, who you're close to? Yeah. Um, hold on. Yeah, I live with my mom. You live with your mom, okay. And um, is she religious at all, or...? Yeah, oh yeah. My mom, well, she came from Cuba. She was a refugee. And she's always believed in God since she was a child. Okay. So, like, I, and we talk and stuff, but I, I don't know. I just feel like I'm, I drink to just, I, I don't go out and party or anything, but it's kind of a party in my room. It's kind of become a trend. Like, I'm starting to do it a lot. And, uh, it, I don't know. It's, like, messing with me. And it's, I, tr I went, like, three days without drinking. And I was, like, I felt good. And then I go, oh, I feel good. So I'm going to go buy beer and, like, just chill out. But when I... When I drink, it just it just feels like I wasted my money, and it feels like uh, I'm like kind of crucif. You know, Jesus set me free from that years ago, but I got back into it somehow. Like I was done. I think I was done with alcohol, but like this is like the worst it's ever been. I understand. Are yeah. you? Um, do you have a Bible? Yeah, my mom has... I, I don't have a Bible in my room. I used to. I don't know where I put it. Um, I don't know where I put it, but um, I talk with my mom, and we talk about God, and it... it you know, we... I remember... I, I haven't, like, read... memorized everything in the Bible, but I know, like, uh, passages, and, like, I know how to relate to passages. Like, with what I know, right, like, already. But, um... So... Yeah. What is what is one of the passages you've memorized? Oh, the fruit of the Spirit. Ooh, love, that's a good joy, one. Peace. Yeah. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, forbearance, long-suffering, meekness. <laughs> I 
think that's everything. No, you missed one. What was it? Self control. Self control. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Not not that's surprising that that's. Look at, do you, yes, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that that's isn't that amazing? Not. Yes. That's yep. um, wow. Yeah. I w I will admit I don't really have self control at times. Well, here's here's what I know to be true. And it is that if you are truly a follower of Jesus Christ, you will follow his commands. And uh -huh. he has commanded you not to be drunk. Um, he's commanded you to walk in a way that is um, righteous. To walk in a way that is a good example to others and and to be pleasing to him. And it seems pretty clear that that's not what's happening. And there's there's reasons for that. And there's only two that I know of. And either one, that you're not truly a follower of Jesus Christ or um, that you are and you're starving your spirit by not uh, being in regular um, communion with God through uh, his word and in prayer and being in a member of a good church and through that you can get yourself to a point where you're vulnerable and um, and you can stumble pretty bad and what I know to be true about this is if you are a believer and a true follower of Jesus Christ and you run into another one like me because I am a believer and I am a true follower of Jesus Christ and I use his word to um, to rebuke you to t show you that you're that you're in sin by for example just you're familiar with the passage that says don't get drunk right yeah yeah so that's that's biblical don't get intoxicated, but um, why does it say that? Do you remember? Um, that one, yeah. Surprisingly, I don't remember. Well, it's from Ephesians, and it's Ephesians five eight, and it says, "Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit." And what is what that, debauchery? Yeah, well, it what just debauch means debauchery is ruining your life. It's another translation would be don't get drunk on wine because it will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it just basically means be, you become reckless. Kind of the things that you were talking about. You know, it's 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 yeah. something where you you buy some some beer and you think it's going to be okay, and all of a sudden you're in a place where you're doing things or acting in ways that is not helpful. It's hurtful. And But the reason why this passage is so important is because what God's talking about is who is leading you, okay? God's, God's commanding you that you are supposed to be filled with the Spirit. You are supposed to be led by God's Spirit. When you repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are sealed with his Holy Spirit. You are indwelt by the living God. You become a new creation. He gives you new desires. He makes you a new being. He gives you a new heart. But he doesn't change everything in an instant. It does take time. I drank and, and swore and, and was um, you know, doing things that were, that were incredibly sinful after I was saved. Over time, God convicted me of them and stripped them from me. And, and people used scripture on me, and, and I repented of those sins. And so if you're a true follower of Jesus Christ, and here I am, your brother, I love you. I care about you. I do not want to see you in slavery to, this, uh, to alcohol and to the sin that, that comes from it. I want to see you free and being controlled by God to do works that bring him glory. And so I am, I am giving you that right now as a brother in love. And if you are truly a follower of Jesus Christ, you will turn 
and you will walk away from this sin and you will be free of it because God has commanded you to do that. Now, if you fall back into it, then you've got to start asking a more serious question, which is, is your salvation sincere? And that is a, that is a much bigger topic. But the thing to know is this, you are saved through repenting and putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and in him alone. And if you've done that, then that's it. You're saved. And we still stumble. I want to be clear on this. You're not going to be perfect. I'm far from perfect myself. I still screw up too. But I do know that when I am commanded by my king to do something, he gives me the power to do it. And I've been free of alcohol for years now. And I am grateful for it. And I wouldn't be that way on my own. He has empowered me to do that. And I, and I trust him that he is a good and loving God. And the good work that he has started in you, he will finish. And the fact that you are here right now with, with three believers in the middle of this virtual world. I mean, you got James, who's a brother in Christ. And you got Andrew, who's a brother in Christ. And this is not an accidental moment. We have a divine yeah. God. He is in control of everything, and he has brought you here tonight to come face to face with this sin and overcome it through his word and through the power of his Holy Spirit. Do you know that to be true? Yes. James, I am praising God right now, and I know that this is not an easy moment. But I know he is an awesome God, and he loves you so much that he was willing to die for you on that cross and finish the work of your salvation there, but he wasn't finished with you. He is loving you today. He is with you in this time right now that you're in, and he is ready to help you, and you need to repent of this, and you need to read your Bible, you need to pray to him, you need to ask for forgiveness, and you need to know for sure that you have it, because this sin too, he paid for on that cross 2,000 years ago, when he died for your sins, and he died for my sins, and for Andrew's sins, and for James' sins. You can trust that, and you can know that every sin you'll ever do from this point forward is paid for as well. But today... And also, if we're... If if you're really struggling with sin, because we do all the time, yes, we you do. You can talk to us because I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be struggling but not have a brother in Christ to talk to. So, yes, you can message myself or or yes, and, and don't don't struggle alone. Don't think, oh yes. no, I've I've uh, done something with alcohol and so my my salvation is not secure. Hang on. You've got brothers in Christ all day there. Yes, quite some you're not alone. Way. You can just con you can Man, contact them. And, uh, you know, because, you know, we might go offline, we might go asleep, and you might think, oh, no, I'm left alone again, especially if you don't have a church. So yeah. but you can contact us at any time. Well, yes. I mean, definitely. And, yeah. And, yeah, and I, I want... found... Go ahead. I found your uh, missionary, I found your stream, because uh, I, I play Fallout, obviously, and... Uh, I saw the crosses and I was uh, like drawn to it. I wanted to see what what it was about and like you're actually like preaching and like doing things like in a video game like in that environment and it was like it was pretty impressive that to bring to uh, you know like there's a lot of places that are void of God and video games is one of them. And I think that's like really cool to people like you guys that um, are believers and I would want to connect with you guys more. Well, I want you to know three things for sure. One is that this did not happen by accident. Two, we are going to be praying for you from this point forward. We're brothers in Christ. Okay. We're family. We are going to be praying for you. In fact, I'm going to pray for you right now in a moment. But the third thing is, is that at the at the most important aspect is your relationship with God is where you need to be really focused. You need to be in his word. You need to have your Bible. I recommend reading the book of John and, and follow it up by the book of James. 
You need to be in prayer to him, asking him to help you avoid this sin. I'm assuming you know the Lord's Prayer. Is that a correct assumption? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today this our daily bread. Forgive us uh, for our trespasses as we trust, as they, as they trespass against us. Uh, I, Hold on, don't stop. Read the next statement. Say I, the next words. What are they? Lord, lead me not into temptation. Lord, deliver me from temptation. It is a cry of help. We are to plead to God. Please, Lord, help me. I cannot do this without you. I need your help. Please help me. Help me to avoid this sin. We are struggling with it every single day, and you are to call upon him for help. And with his help, he will help you mortify it. I know that for a fact. In my own life, and I've seen it in others as well, but you have to call upon him, and you have to do it every day, and he will be there for you. You have to give yourself up to be controlled by his Holy Spirit, and he will help you avoid this. That's why he taught us to pray that way. Does that make sense, Christopher? Yes. The other thing, what state are you in? California. California. Well, I don't know, I don't know um, what around there, but you have to find a good church. You need to be in a church with believers who are going to help you, and they're going to support you and teach you and disciple you. You have to be. Otherwise, um, you're on your own. I mean, we're obviously here for you, but this is not going to replace uh, being a member of a local church. It is paramount. You have to be pr in prayer. You have to be in his word, and you need to be a member of a local church. So I, yeah. you, you need to start looking at that. But prayer and in his word every single day, that is, that is paramount for you and, and all of us as believers. Does that make sense? And, and if, you yeah. don't know, if you don't know where to start with... Okay, Steam, we're in a really serious situation or conversation right now. Can I talk to you about it later, buddy? I'd really appreciate it. Missionary, I finally got all rise. Good. I really appreciate that. Steam, could you let us finish this conversation right now? Thank you, Steam. I really appreciate it. All right. So, Andrew, you were saying? I'm um, just saying that um, if um, uh, sorry, um. I, yeah, I was so I'm gonna have to I, I, I I'm just I'm just blocking this guy's team for a second um, yeah um, it, in the meantime while you don't have a church or, or you don't know how to get um, into the word and into prayer then um, I, I've got time for that you know if you don't know where to start with with the Bible and if you want someone to read it with or, or if you want someone to pray with and for you then um, I can do that. Yeah, we we're we're here, definitely. Yeah, like yeah, as yeah. in just sitting right here in yep. a party chat or whatever it is. I completely agree with Andrew. Uh, I'll just I I know what if it's I like see, to be completely alone and not have. Yeah, you're not alone to talk yeah. through what nope. the Bible says with. Yep. I'm very I'm very uh, I I'm a very isolated person. Like I can I, tell I can I tell. Yeah, and I'm that's very like awesome. eighty percent of people on PlayStation. Yeah. But here's what you need to know. You're not alone because first off and foremost, God is with you. All right. Your, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is with you. No matter where, how isolated you are, there is nowhere you can go that he is not there. Number one. Number two is, as Andrew said, we are your brothers in Christ. We are with you. We love you. We care about you. You are not going through this alone. And then the third aspect is you can trust that God is going to guide you to a church where you're also going to meet other followers of Jesus Christ who are your family members. We are literally going to know each other forever. And so you can count on the fact that we are here for you today and we are here for you literally for eternity. So I want you to be very, very solid on that, as Andrew has said as well. So, Christopher, I'm going to pray for you right now, but is there anything else you want to say before I do? Um, just thank you. Um, 
like I I was I've been friends with you for like a week now maybe. Okay. And I just I saw you were on and I just I just uh, I wasn't gonna do it but I just did it and then I found you. You were like right near me too. It was weird. Like you were like I was at White Spring, and it was like I was like I heard you guys talking, and it was like grabbing me. Well, it wasn't it wasn't an accident. It wasn't weird. It was called a divine appointment, and I'm assuming your mother has been praying for you as well. And this is uh, this is an answer to her prayers as well, definitely. Um, actually, Andrew, would you like uh, would you like the uh, to pray for um, Christopher here? Yeah, sure. All right. Um, um, uh, it's Chris or Christopher. Christopher is fine. No worries. Okay. Um, yeah, Father, thank you for bringing us together in this game in various places in the world. And we bring before you our, our brother Christopher. Father, as you know, I'm I'm certainly not unaware of what it's like to be isolated and to be struggling with sin. But Father, you've made sure that I have become aware of the salvation, of the forgiveness that, for what I've been doing wrong in my life in Jesus. And thank you for the friends that I have here and also friends that I have online that are helping me to um, live in a way which brings glory to you with my life. Father, our lives are here for not our own, necessarily our own enjoyment or, or whims, but to bring you glory. And so I ask for Chris in particular that you work out um, the good works that you have planned in advance for him. Um, Father, we pray that a church in California is found that is going to love and, and support and faithfully teach the Bible um, with Chris. But Father, in the meantime, we ask that you'll give us um, hearts of uh, being receptive to your word and also being bold with your word as as, Mich as Peter is very bold in uh, coming here, give us also this boldness to speak your word and to apply your word. Lord, your word doesn't condemn those who are in you. Your word brings life to us. Father, um, where there is sin involving alcohol or whatever it may be, we ask that um, through knowing that we are worshipping the one who has defeated sin, who has defeated Amen. all people on the cross, Amen. the cross was it victory Amen. and that victory is to be lived out in our lives and father we know that it's not easy and it's certainly not immediate it's not instant but you show us and enable us through the knowledge that our sins are wiped clean that we can walk in that victory and father um, help us to be loving and reaching out and available and uh, equipped but not in just in terms of Bible knowledge, but in terms of empathy and in terms of willingness to use our time, to sacrifice our time and attentions in a way that uh, is a blessing to others we come across. And so, um, yeah, I ask for Chris that you fill him with your Holy Spirit as you have filled us and um, that this will show forth in the glory of his life. We pray that the good works, the plan that you have for his life is going to be put into practice from this point onwards. And use us, we ask, um, to accomplish that for your glory. And these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm going to follow that up with a prayer for uh, Josh and Randall as well. So, Heavenly Father, I am grateful for this time to... Uh, pray for my brother uh, Randall who's fighting cancer and for his son Josh who is struggling with this whole uh, watching his dad go through this and the prospect of his death and I just ask Lord that you will use this as an opportunity to show your glory if there's any possibility Lord that you could um, you could somehow uh, help the doctors or perform a miracle and free him from this cancer uh, Lord please do that please please use this as a chance to show how amazing you are. You are the God of the impossible. I pray you do that. And Lord, if that is not your will, uh, I also pray that you would still use this for your glory and you would draw uh, Randall to you in a way that gives him that peace that surpasses all understanding. 
and that you would guide Josh in this, that he would see what a good and loving God you are, that we not, need not fear death because you have paid for our price on the cross and we are going to be welcomed home. There is there is no condemnation for us. There is no fear and death for us. And so I pray Josh would see that and he would be strengthened for it as he loves his dad so much. And this is such a hard time for him. Please help him, Lord. And ultimately, Lord, as well, I pray for Christopher here. Please help him, Lord. You have given me such a wonderful gift to be free of slavery and alcohol. And I pray, Lord, that you will do that for my brother here, that you would help him to overcome this and that you would be glorified through it. Please ensure he is surrounded by believers in both prayer and also in just us being with him and, and supporting him and that we would know that um, that you're at work here, Lord. We can see it. We are so grateful for it. And I pray for Christopher, and I pray for Andrew, and I pray for um, James and their ministries, Lord, that you would bless them abundantly, that you would give them wisdom and guidance and boldness, that we would all proclaim the good news about your son, Jesus Christ, and you would use us mightily, Lord, for your glory. Let us all get to heaven to hear those those wonderful words, well done, good and faithful servant. And I ask this in your son's name, our King, our Savior, our Hero, Jesus Christ. Amen.